but Soul Masters Ling Ling Yi loves to go for adventures. On a recent trip to Argentina, she managed to see the pet wonder of the world, the Iguazu or Unfortunately, she didn't meet Maradona, but did learn a bit about the city of Tango while in Buenos Aires and realized no matter what, she can't dance and she can't speak Spanish. Tonight, she will attempt in English her fifth assignment in the storytelling series called Bringing History to Life. She will, of course, come closer to home with her story. Ladies and gentlemen, to set the scene, I would like you to imagine it is the 1850s. Yes, hundred, about 150 <coughs> years ago. It is time of adventure and discovery. It is the time of British adventurer and naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace student of plants and animals. Alfred humbly supported the likes of Charles Darwin, whose theory of evolution through natural selection became known even to this day. You will experience one of Alfred's adventures as he arrived in the place you know well, the island of Borneo, seek the beautiful orangutan. The title of Advanced Toastmasters Bronze Limbenese speech is called Effort and Mias. Effort and Mias. Advanced Toastmasters Bronze Limbenese. <laughs> well-traveled man, a passionate person, a naturalist. I died much earlier, before my time. I was just in my prime. Who was he, you asked? His name was Alfred Russell Wallace. And I, I am Hongo Pygmalis, an orangutan, or in the Dayak language, Nias. Yes. Quite like that name. Tonight, this is the story about Alfred and me. I think if I hadn't gone to that camp that day, I would still be alive. But unfortunately, I heard through the whispering wind that this Alfred man arrived on my island. It was in 1854 he arrived. He came, he, he came to collect plants and animals, animals he'd catch. And he'd put them and preserve them in something called arak. I don't know why he did that. Insects, why keep them? I eat them. <laughs> but I was told he took these insects and sent them far away to a place called England, to museums. People would pay money. They paid wallets money money. Can you eat it? Does it taste like durians? Mm. I'll tell you what though, speaking about durians, one thing that was very common between this Alfred and me, we both liked durians. Mm. Alfred would sit and eat these durians. He'd say, these are emperors of fruit. They are the king of fruits. And he said to his fellow people in England, you must travel to this land and eat many of them. But they didn't. I wonder why. <laughs> well, anyhow, other things about this, Alfred. I am just a very simple animal. I live in a beautiful forest that is full and live, and the trees are huge. And my favorite thing I used to do is to watch butterflies. One of my most favorite butterflies is one with beautiful black wings, very deep, rich velvet. And on each end, there'd be triangles of brilliant green shimmering on the edges, with a red on the corner. Alfred caught one of these with his net, and he gave it a name. He 
what the name was? Oh, it was the Trogon Terra Rukiana. It's a scientific name. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually named because, did you know, they named it in honour of Sir James Brooke, the then president of Borneo. I don't know why he still had to hand catch it. It was so beautiful. But one of the sad things is that one of his objectives of landing in my island was to actually find me in my home. And when he did that, do you know what he'd do? I heard he has caught many of my kind already. And when he did, he'd kill us. And then he'd skin us, take the bowels, disembowel us, cut us open, and tear off our skin. And take that skin, put it in a barrel of alcoholic spirit to keep. I felt sad when I heard this. Very sad. There was a mother once too who was caught high in a tree. And she had a baby. That baby also died. How many does he need? I know in all his collection, he traveled as well as Alfred Mann. He even traveled through the whole Malay archipelago, which means, of course, all the way from the Malay Peninsula through to the islands of Bali, Lombok, through to Papua, down to even Timor. He traveled widely, collecting and collecting and collecting. You know how much he collected? How many specimens of animals in natural history? 122,616 specimens. I was one. And how did it happen? 1855. Even though I'm an orangutan, the whispering wind tells me that on June the 24th was my day. I told you if I hadn't gone to the camp that day, I would have been still alive. But I was hungry. What do you do? I only eat fruit. There was a beautiful fruit tree near the Chinaman's house. So I went down. <coughs> and as I ate the fruit, I saw the Chinaman down there. And he was yelling and screaming all over the place. And he ran away. I didn't understand what the problem was. So the next thing that I know, I saw this man come running up. He was very different to everyone else. He was very, very pale. He had a hat. And then he had something called a stick in his hand. I don't know what that stick was for, but I don't think it was a very nice stick. I watched, and when I saw him come, I ran, and I went up that tree as fast as I could go. Up and up. Then as I went up, that man below me, probably might have been Alfred, I don't know, but I think it was, he took that stick and he held it in his hands. And I saw him pull back, and then pull back, finger, bang! Something came firing up at me and hit me in my arm. And a searing pain went through and it was so sore. It was really sore. I tried to scramble as high as I could to the highest tree. It was immense, that tree that I stood upon. I knew at that stage I couldn't go very far. So as an orangutan, what do we do? We have no defense. My only defense was to hide. So I quickly grabbed the branches and I started to fold them and I made myself a nest. And I covered and I hid myself. That man below shouted. The Chinaman said, Tuan Tuan, the orangutan, still there, Tuan Tuan. I looked, hoping he would not see me. That man with that stick fired two more shots. Boom, boom. Each time that shot went, I felt something hit my body. So I was trying to stand up and look down. And as I looked down, I saw Men below me. Something's 
still be here for others to come for another 50 years. My life is slowly going now. I'm dying. You can't get to me because I'm so high. My body will go to the forest. And I can feel the blood dripping down. I am dead. Because this is how I would like to honor how she has prepared herself for this speech. <coughs> right? When she approached me to be her evaluator, she spoke about her need, her wish to do a storytelling. One of the skills that she has that I think well surpasses all the Toastmasters here in this room. I think you all will agree with me? Yes. In her manual, she was required to do two things. The objective were did she understood the story, the historical story very well. And a very wonderful attempt in storytelling is when you actually internalize the character of the event. And if you really listen carefully, she was not human in storytelling. It was not human that were able to spellbound you, mesmerize you, lock you down to your attention. It was none other by a rank tank named Myers, right? The second purpose, was she able to use very good storytelling skills? And if you follow her voice, and if you close your eyes, you were, I was really mesmerized and captivated by how she projected a character that was so soothing, was so slow and yet trying to embrace us, so real. So orangutan! <laughs> and I didn't know orangutan was so much like us until Bing showed it to us. And, and a great effort at it. Now, the twist that I would like to make in my evaluation, the second part of my evaluation, would be to suggest for the audience on the areas that we should learn from Bing. First, we should learn from her the skill of organizing our story from a well beginning that has nothing to do with the end. What I mean by that, in the beginning of the story and how she prepared herself, she spoke about history. I don't think anyone in this room would, at, at the least of our imagination, expect to hear a story about a orangutan dying in the end. We all wanted a happy story. What a climax, a bite being a sad one. The second part that we should learn from Bing is the use of first party storytelling. It's very common for all of us to give a story being a third party. This happened to this gentleman, that happened in that event, and on that day, what happened? Tell a story from a first party's perspective. Even if you're dead, <laughs> it doesn't stop Bing. And the last part, <coughs> it's not <coughs> points for improvement. I think at her level, it's point for enhancement. 
My personal suggestion is using a cross. When you are orangutan, when you are telling a story, use your body, use props. I don't know how orangutan acts. <laughs> Maybe you can research. I can do a good job. And when you reach the end, and they are telling us that you are dying,